Hi, I'm Heiko Blair, and I would like to talk about a biotope aquarium, and in particular about one where I originally found Hemigrounds Blairi. I would like to talk about the habitat and how to decorate it as close as possible to the place where this fish originally lives. It has a wide distribution, but I want to talk about the Rio Jufaris. This is the river where I found it. And this is a far affluent of the Rio Negro in the state of Amazon in Brazil. Um, when I found it in 1965, the water was so-called black water. And uh, this is very acid. The water there is around pH 4. The highest I ever measured was <clears throat> about 4.5 uh, or 4.6. And it has extreme low conductivity, less than 20. It lives in large groups, very large groups, schooling. I have seen sometimes hundreds and up to a thousand schooling together and even more. And the habitat is more, not only black water, but it's full with driftwood, um, fallen in trees, leaves, and you have millions of leaves on the underground over almost exclusively fine white sand. The plants growing there are mostly in fair species, um, also, that's water lilies, as called in America, and also some heterocotyle species. There are uh, quite a few floating plants like Azola, Richia, uh, Lemna. You can find um, very few really submerged plants, like Tonina and very rarely Echinodora species. Further north, I found the Echinodora species um, in an affluent of the Jufaris, which has later been named Echinodorus hygobleri in my honor. But hardly any other aquarium plants. I have seen once or twice in a habitat where Hemigros Pleary lives as well, uh, Cabomba species, especially Cabomba uh, fucata, the red Cabomba. Um, that's about it, what is plants concerned. They need shady places. It cannot be bright sunlight. That means you cannot have bright light on top all the time. They must have places where they can swim to, which is shady as in nature, and especially if you have uh, Nymphaea species, naturally they will have floating leaves and they love to go below those. Um, if you buy them or get them, make sure that you don't put them right away in very hot water or very acid, extremely acid, because normally the exporters who ship them out mainly out of Manaus in South America, they try to quarantine them already in water values around six. But it's not advisable to calf them or keep them in waters above seven. That's really not good. And in very high conductivity because the extreme high conductivity can harm them. And they are also not fishes which are used to CO2 so have them not in those typical aquascape aquariums which are uh, naturally full of CO2. The fish cannot support this, cannot take it easily. It should be biotope correct. The other fishes you can uh, place with them, which they live with, is uh, often is uh, Parachyrodon simulans. It's also called the blue or the uh, 
green neon tetra, which is the smallest of all parachyrodons. Um, I have found them in the Atapapo with cardinal tetras, that's parachyrodon axorodi, and uh, they are frequently found with pyrolina species, with nanostomus species, so you know the pencil fishes. They are found with Corydoras um, and also Otocinclus live plenty in those habitats. Some smaller Ancestrus and you can find uh, many other fishes, especially uh, Apistogramma, Apistogramma menesii. You can find um, often Decrossus, Decrossus filamentosus, and um, some other smaller cichlids.